Oh shit. god, already. Hey everybody, it's Fanny. And Dick here. Recently, we had the opportunity to spend the day in Dorset with Superior Motorcycle Experiences for some off-road tuition and trail riding. Superior Motorcycle Experiences offers a full day of riding along with some fantastic food and camaraderie. Although I've been off-road riding before, I'm always up for learning new skills to complement those in my quiver. For me, having never been off-road before, this was an opportunity to try my hand at off-road riding within a structured program. Uh, it keeps stalling. No, I got it. Yep. Woo! Oh Shit. God! Already. Shit. Sorry, Sorry Emily. Sorry. Sorry. Ooh, Emily. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't a good start. Are you alright with that? Yeah, Emily, sorry, are you alright? Deep breath, sorry babe. About that. That, that was that wasn't a problem. Deep breath. Sorry about that. I feel really embarrassed. You should not be embarrassed. Take a deep breath and get to know your bike. It's not a problem. Sorry, there's been a casualty. Don't worry about it in the slightest. Not a problem. So I'd like to talk about the training now, <laughs> but it seems to me... You want to talk about the crash? I think you want to talk about the crash. <laughs> I, well, it wasn't really a crash. I, let's just say this. I'll start here. I was really nervous coming into this. Should we replay it? Because I'm pretty sure I heard a crash. Oh, the, the mirrors There was a casualty. I'll, I, yeah, I admit that. I admit that. But look, here's the problem. My nerves got the best of me, and I was nervous about going off road for the first time. Do you remember, like... When we get on a bike, when I first got back into riding, I, I before we would even go out on a main road, I would say, can we just, just make a left down our road and just go down to the end and then turn around to the parking lot and then come back, just so I can have a few minutes to become acclimated to, to riding. But you realize that... We were on our way to go to a field to become acclimated to go riding. But it's a good lesson. Lesson number one, don't be intimidated. You know, you're there for a reason. I'm here to learn. It's just, I was in my head. And you fell over. And I fell over. Okay. I admit it. Yeah. It's But but it was a learning experience. And did it happen again? Yes. <laughs> it did not happen like that. We just missed the whole opportunity to talk about the training. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm going to interrupt you about explaining away the crash because we need to talk about the training that they did. Yes, that's fine. But can I just say that what happened was I let the clutch out too quickly. As usual. As usual. I clamped on my front brake. Yeah, which, which is... Which is recipe for disaster, which immediately put me off balance and I was not prepared to hold up the weight of the bike and I couldn't save the bike being upright. That's okay. what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. You've just described... Every bike drop ever. <laughs> so can we move on to the training now? I had seen James do a teaser session at the dispatch rally in 2019. And I came home and was raving about the very simple skills that he was teaching. And so when I heard that he was involved with setting up this company and doing longer days or longer trips... I told you that I wanted to come and bring you along and do this again because of how valuable even the short lessons were at the dispatch rally. I didn't know what to expect, but I think that this short period of training in the field was helpful in that it allowed me the opportunity to feel what the bike was like going off on wet grass and to learn some introductory skills about weight distribution and how the bike reacts when you're standing up versus sitting down because going into this, I think didn't think that I would be able to stand up on the bike. 
but I quickly learned that it was much easier to control the bike and the distribution of my weight on the bike standing up versus sitting down. What's funny is whenever I do these things, I try to suspend my experience. I try to go in and say, even if I know how to do something, I try and listen to the instructor and apply the things that the instructor says so that it will complement what I already know, or maybe it'll make me think about a skill in a new way, and I'll become better at it. And James, like any other teacher, was very good at differentiating. He saw that I was applying old skills or maybe going too fast and he came over and he was like empowering me he's like you know the next level of this is dot 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 and it's kind of funny that when people do that as someone who's taught in the past I always catch when people are trying to differentiate for me (laughs) and essentially instead of telling me off saying slow the hell down do it this way they go oh that's really good but try it this way and (laughs) and he was (laughs) very he was very good at that yes he was You know, James was able to make sure that he created a program where everybody can come away with something beneficial. Okay, so this is our first byway. Dog walkers, horses, cyclists. They're going to be everywhere we are all day. And be prepared that if you come around the corner and there is someone walking their dog or whatever, we might be going to pull it up quickly, all right? Power down and up the hill. And we'll just go, you should only really need first or maybe second on this one. Take your time, spread it out, we'll regroup at the end. So for however good the tuition was in the field, my money was on getting onto some trails that I would not have gone on otherwise. You were anticipating what it would be like before we went, but once you were in situ, once you were out on the road and you pulled off that road onto that first track, what did you think? What was what was going I, through your mind? Honestly, I thought it was a lot easier than I had expected. I expected something a lot more gnarly and slippy and muddy and wet and trenchy. And, and that wasn't what it was, but I think that was because the way that James structured the program We started with trails that worked on the fundamentals and then became something more difficult, adding tasks, either mud or chalk or rock or ruts. And it helped me gain confidence because this first run, it was a nice way to learn how to steer and control and to look ahead and to be aware of what was around me without having to deal with a bunch of obstacles so it was nice and I was learning how to use my rear brake while I was standing up which was something that was a little bit different and it was comfortable to know that you could go you could rev the Himalayan and you could get some speed on this machine down this run without having to shift out of first. I think the variety of the tracks he brought you on is exactly what you're saying. He started us off just getting us off of the tarmac. Gravel and dirt and a splash of mud here and there. And then each of the tracks had very unique things throughout the day. And you say, you know, are you expecting more rocks and more ruts? I think those definitely came in the day, but by the time you got to them, you had built some confidence over what you had seen previously. Certainly. I wasn't disappointed to not see and experience those things on the first trail. I was pleasantly surprised and I was relieved that the first trail was as user-friendly as it was so that, that I could work on what I had learned up during the tuition portion of the day and put it into practice. Have a good day. You look and you go, whoa, 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 that's a lot of water to go through on a motorbike, okay? Two things I need you to think about. So don't, I, it's not that I was disappointed in, not, in no, anything. No, I didn't mean to say, I didn't mean to imply that you were It was just a really nice, a nice way to gain confidence. What I like about riding motorcycles off-road is it doesn't matter if you 
go for nine hours on trails and never cross a road. Or if you're just riding down the road and you see a patch of dirt and you're like, yeah, and you're on there for two minutes. It's To me, it's exciting just to get the rubber off of the pavement. And so if the whole day was the first track where we're just going through kind of Jeep trails and byways, I still probably would have had an excellent time. I do like the fact that he incorporated new challenges. And even this, the second track we went through, it was, you know, big puddle, which is a nice feature. And then we're back on a Jeep trail. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was like, oh, here's a, here's a little crossing. Here's a little water crossing. And then we're back on kind of a byway. And that wasn't disappointing to me because I thought that was an, an interesting track. Is that it? And the other riders that were in the group that we were in were more experienced off-road than us. And I overheard them saying, oh, that was a good track. So I, I was thinking, oh, maybe this is too tame because we're tagging along. But even what we considered a tame track was still entertaining to those more experienced riders. <laughs> I can't believe I did it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, really. Let's run up there. Get the camera. Yeah. So we would stop at the beginning and the end of each of the tracks. James would give a little orientation or kind of recce on what we were to expect on the track. And then at the end, he gave us kind of a summation or a congratulations. And then we went on to the next track. How much of that orientation were you able to take on or apply? I think a fair majority of it. I liked it a lot because I like to know what to expect. So for him to say, okay, this is what you're gonna see on this trail. If there were some hazards that he didn't think that we could handle, he'll say, to, you know, stay to the left. And then when you get past the big puddle, move over to the right. So it was nice to do that. Nicely done. That was very nicely done. That's textbook. It became a little less detailed as we went on. Good line. You know, he, he was just having us look for the major obstacles, but it was a nice way to enjoy the trail and to focus on maneuvering the bike, but also to watch the people in front of you and in your rear view mirror, just watch the people behind you. So it was, it made me feel a lot more comfortable. Good line there. That was really good. Yeah, maybe it's just my... <laughs> my very limited attention span but i would listen and i'd hear i'd go to like a certain point and then i'd be like yeah white I could, no- I could it was t- white noise i could tell and it was just like because you were talking in my ear the whole time so i'm trying to listen to james and you're talking in my ear and i'm like I, well i just missed what james said so i hope it wasn't important james had said he doesn't want us talking to each other on the trail and i think we did a good job at not doing that yeah. We were letting each other approach the trail or attack the trail in the way it needed to be attacked. Nicely done, baby. You having fun? Yeah, I'm just focusing. Yeah, that was really good. You see how it seems alien to power on, but the faster you go, it seems to like iron out, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I needed to express all of the things I, I was bottling up on the track and to anticipate things that were coming ahead. And What I found entertaining on the trail, I liked the fact that I could hear you talking to yourself and, and talking yourself through the different situations because the more I concentrate, the more stimm I get. I don't, mm. I'm the opposite. I, I just shut up because all of my brain power is focusing on what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I talk out loud. I tell myself, a lot of time you're like, oh, I already know that. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. <laughs> like, there was one point where, after I glazed over in the orientation of whatever trail, when we got up on the trail, or when I got up in the trail, I, I was supposed to stay left, and I was right. And I was like, oh, I got to stay, I got to, oh, I had to stay left. And I, I'm saying that out loud to myself, and you're, and you're like, what? And I was, it's, it's, it's for me. This is my own information. I'm upset that the cameras don't show elevation all that well. It flattens everything out because... I was supposed to pick left, wasn't I? Okay. 
there were some really challenging ascents and there were some really kind of loose descents on the day that will not be appreciated in yeah, the, in the definitely, retelling. Watching the watching these tracks back, it's definitely not translating. I think the GoPro is kind of fish eyeing everything out, especially the hill climb going up to lunch. I was really shitting bricks about that. It was really steep. There was a lot of loose gravel. You're kind of assigned to the track at the bottom. You know, they have one rider go to the left, then the next rider go to the right, and then alternating back and forth because in case anybody yeah, falls. that's where I wasn't listening. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, but so to get to the top, I was just so chuffed to get to the top because I, it was something that was really steep and it was very tricky. And then to watch that back, it actually looks quite, quite, yeah, quite tame, common. Yeah, yeah. That's so. So watching this, please don't be lulled into a sense of security about what the terrain was like. The terrain definitely was challenging throughout the entire time. Even the first track was was a rush. I agree. I think every track was rush, and even even the ones that in the playback seem forgettable. It was great to be off road yeah. in whatever the situation it was. Definitely. That was awesome. I was one of the last people up the hill to lunch, and when I got up there, James is already dismantling the rear end of one of the other riders' bikes who had pulled up this. It was, it was like, like an, it arrowhead. Like an arrowhead. arrowhead. Yeah, it yeah. was like this very sharp bit of stone and that popped his very knobby i think they were continental off-road tires without a thought and without a breath james and emily were pit stopping the bike while the rest of us were eating this very elaborate lunch with hot tea and coffee overlooking this wonderful dorset valley this is good content i just i have to get the tea in the shot <laughs> well i'm sipping the tea yeah okay and John, who was our chef extraordinaire, it was not only an amazing place to stop, I think we really lucked out with the weather and the temperature, but to stop where we stopped, to have that vantage point and such fantastic food out outside was even better. By the time you get to here, you want all the momentum you've decided you're going to have. You want to have set a speed and this is the speed. Now, this point is the last time you put any power on because adding power is losing traction. So I'm going at whatever speed I want, I've set that throttle and I've gone, right, this is me. When you get to here, remember, tilt the bike if you're gonna tilt anything, stay upright. Leaning in is not gonna do you any favors. When you come round, try to make that as little a corner as you can. So if you can straighten it out from here and be aiming to the middle of the tree, here, off you go. He's coming. Where's he going? You see how he didn't gun it? Yeah. He just kept the power on. You see what he did wrong? What did he do? He leaned his bike uh, and then he gassed it and did a 360. Yeah. So he leaned him and his bike around that turn instead of doing what we've been practicing all morning. Right, right. Yeah. Here he goes. That was good. Yeah, you're gonna. You're gonna do fine. You see how easy he went? Good, good, good. Good, good. 
good. Keep your power even. Good, good, good. You got it. You got it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. What's that? Yeah, I wasn't nervous until I sat on the bike. <laughs> After lunch? Much more difficult than the first half, I think. Much more difficult? Yeah, I think if you would say that the first half was about a 4 5, the second half, at least right after lunch, was about a 7 or an 8 for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it got right it, into it. It. It, it. it definitely went from minor accomplishments to, okay, apply everything <laughs> you've learned in the morning. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're into it now. It was later in the day, so mm. I think that there was more pedestrian movement. We also started to get some rain. The trails and tracks were greasier. There was more water. So all the water and, and rain that had come in the week before was just sitting and waiting for us. And some of the, most of the trails were like single track. They were like really close together. Was it close to what you were worrying about before we left? It was a little bit more harrowing, yeah. But I think it, it felt that a little bit easier because we started riding better as a group. I think that, that our movements became more cohesive so that we were getting through the tracks a lot quicker. Mm. And I oftentimes felt that, you know, they when James would explain something before the beginning of a track, I built it up to be something a lot more significant in my head that when we actually went through it, yeah, it was greasy and it was slick and it was nerve-wracking but i was like yeah yeah okay i got this well that was good because we started riding apart you were we did we, yeah i wasn't riding I was, behind you anymore i was anymore. up behind james yeah and you were and i was at the back i was yeah. at the, i was at the back and i would hear you kind of cheer or grunt <laughs> and i and i wasn't listening to the the orientation beforehand so i was just taking it as it came and I, I thought it was very exciting. The afternoon was a bit like a Donkey Kong levels to me. You know, you look at, you start playing Donkey Kong, you're like, oh shit, this this level's really hard. And then it goes to the next board and you're like, oh shit, this, this level's is, even harder. This is even harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh shit, said. I just got knocked off. Because, well, in the afternoon, I, I met the ground again a couple times. A couple times. I did. But I think I was also getting tired. It wasn't physical exhaustion. So it wasn't my body quitting or anything. And my energy was really good. It was my mind being like, wow, wow this, has been, well, I think this has been a really, you know, high concentration levels, a high degree of execution. And there's a bit of adrenaline that keeps you kind of fueled yes. through yeah. these experiences. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was just doing what he did. <laughs> Well, now we've made it this far. I can get away with telling you we've never got a full group through there before. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's just giving you the idea that you can control your, you can control it with the clutch. You can rev as much as you like as long as you're controlling it with the clutch. Just like everything else before, okay. everything else before, even power. Oh, shit. Even power, even power. Hello. Two fingers. Nice and easy. Where are you going? Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, mother in heaven. That should My bike is smoking. That shouldn't have happened that way. <laughs> Smoking like this? Yes, it's steam. Okay, shall I? I just hit that rock and skid. Don't pick it up. Okay. Give it a minute. So when you got out was a fucking bastard, but now it's got you back. No, don't. Who's that? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's fine, yeah. No, no, it's okay. Let the I guess. adrenaline so let the adrenaline settle. Yeah. I hit the rock and then skid. Are you okay? Yeah, no, honestly, I'm I'm good. I'm fine. All right. Okay. Let the adrenaline settle. Good fall, though. All right. Thanks, babe. This puddle two weeks ago was horrific because it was a bit deeper, but also you can see where the 4x4s four are squirreling in and out of it. Yeah. And the ruts the other side are now really wide, whereas they were like probably one tire width. width. So you'd go through the puddle and you'd have to be super precise about being in the rut the other side. You don't now. But what you do have to do is just aim into the channel, the other side. Don't stop riding until you get up to where it starts to look dry. Be like, yeah, I really did that. Okay, there's a climb now where it's very rocky and it's very hard underneath. This, everywhere you go, the ground is solid. So, no matter where you move on this climb, your bike can get over what's coming. The thing you have to tell yourself before you attack this is the bike's getting up this hill. In your mind, you're going to go. I can't ride over that because you've never done it before but these bikes just swallow this up it's no problem at all first gear max revs pick your line there'll be parts of it that you're like this is a piece of piss why do you talk about it because there's real hard pack lovely kind of firm flat ground and you switch sides and you switch sides as you go around the last bend and up the hill that is where you'll go geez look at the rocks and your bike will start to bounce around but if you commit with some power and just in your mind, no matter what you see, go, that's where I'm confident I want to go, or that, or that, or that. Make your own choice, and any choice you make, this bike's going to get up that hill. Good line. Don't be afraid. Oh, oh, God. You okay? Turn off the bike. Are you, are yeah, you still good. under the bike? No. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, 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 I'm good. I'm good.
Yeah, and then you're. And then it's like. <laughs> it's like, am I in a riverbed? Thank you for all your help today, Emily. You've been, you've been a comfort, very invaluable. Done so well. You're too kind. Like, like at least, if I have all my limbs, then that's. It's a good day. It's a good day. You know, both of them provide really great support in different ways um you know it was great having emily as a woman you know she it was just comforting to have her there and she had some great advice and i think james taking the time to you know go through the bits where he could sense i was a bit uncomfortable i really appreciated that because you know i wanted to do this for me, you know, I wanted to try something different and go beyond my comfort zone. But me as a person, that's not something I typically do because I feel like I have to know what's going on. You know, I study and this, I kind of just went in like, all right, I guess we'll see what happens then. Yeah, this is definitely a, a star experience from the beginning to the end, from equipment to instruction to experience. It doesn't get any better than what James and Emily have put on today. Really, really, I, I feel like a completely different rider now. Everybody, you know, seemed to be patient and working together. And even though we were all at different levels, nobody was left out. And I, and that was my fear going into this. I'm like, how is he gonna deal with somebody like me, who's an absolute beginner, and somebody like Ian, who's, like a madman on, on an off-road bike. I certainly appreciate it. Oh, he's got a flat. Ooh, I gotta get off the road. Yep. Yeah. No, no. Oh, I thought you were the flat. No, no, no. Just go out. I'm ready? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Anyway, I think you make some very good points about today's experience. Just that right there, that second flat tire, it's a good example. If we were with another group, they would be like, all right, we're going to call the van and wait to recover this bike. Well, what did you think of the Himalayans? I, you know, I'm really impressed. It was very well balanced. It had good power when it, it needed to, and the tires were excellent. And it's great handling, but I was intimidated getting on it. Shit, I fell over in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it was an inauspicious start, but I'll tell you, it was a great finish. Uh, so we're here already? We're here we're already. We're here already. Oh, it's oh, over. It's Our over. day is over. <laughs> This is where oh, I, I fucking, this is where I dump it. Don't this is where I dump it, right here on that turn. Well, thank you for having an open mind and giving it a go, babe, because I think it was a cracking day. It was a cracking day. Superior motorcycle experiences. Many thanks for a cracking day to James, Emily, and superior motorcycle experiences. Can't beat it. Damn straight. I'm gonna do it again. I want us to do it again. We're gonna do this again. I do it again. This is where you drop it. Shut finish up. the day, finish shut, the day like shut you up. started it. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Drop it. Just, just right here. I'll give you. I'll give you a fiver. I'll give you a fiver if you drop it. Shut up! I'm not gonna drop it. Shut up! God. So Emily, you gotta be honest. And tipped her bike into you and then you both fell over you both knocked your bikes over did you think oh shit this is gonna be a day <laughs> we've got not as far as that toilet and have a crash before oh yeah we got to here but it wasn't really a crash it was a little it was a bike work which is completely fair if you like that video and you want to see more like them hit like share and subscribe